Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. I thought I'd hop on and show you what I'm cooking in the kitchen today. Um, if you know me at all, you know that I find cooking extremely therapeutic. It relaxes me, it makes me feel amazing when I'm in the kitchen. I absolutely love it. Um, and today, I decided I was going to make, I mentioned a salad yesterday on my, uh, on my video that I was gonna make a pear and walnut salad, but I didn't make that yesterday. I ended up getting the stuff to make it today, so I'll show you how to make that salad today with the dressing. It's like um, a honey um, Dijon dressing, really, really good. And I'm gonna make some cod today, some breaded cod, and I'm gonna put it in the oven, fresh tartar sauce, um, and see how it turns out. I normally don't make fish because, one, I don't really like seafood much, but cod has always been amazing to me. Like, I love fish and chips. Why? Because they're fried. Of course I like them. So today I'm gonna make cod in the oven. I'm just gonna bread them and then uh, season them and bake them in the oven. A little healthier spin and I'm gonna make the salad so first I'm going to show you what I do to make the salad you can probably see back there I have my air fryer this one is a Wolfgang Puck uh, air fryer Robbie got it for me on Amazon I love this thing I love my air fryer I make bagels in it homemade bagels I have that recipe on my page if you're interested um, I make chicken wings. I make those little um, egg roll things in there. You can make everything in this air fryer. I absolutely love it. Steak, everything. But right now, I have some maple bacon in there. And I had to buy an extra pack because um, Robbie loves this bacon. I bought it the other day and made it for breakfast, and he's like, that bacon is amazing. It's just maple flavored bacon. This is a thick cut. I think this is the thicker one. This is a thicker cut bacon. So I took a pack of this and I put it, I sprayed my air fryer and I put it in the air fryer till it gets nice and crispy and done. The other thing I like about using the air fryer is that there's not so much grease everywhere. You know, if you bake it in the oven, it gets greasy. If you bake it on the stove, there's grease everywhere. So this is a great way to cook off your bacon. Okay, for the salad, now for the salad, let me put these eggs on the side. They're for my fish. For the salad I bought, I buy this, um, this mixture that has like spinach and arugula and all the different greens in there. I love, love, love this blend. And I, was, I bought two of them. Actually, let me go with this one first because this one, this one is looking a little older. So I don't wanna, I wanna use up that first. So that one has a bunch of arugula and spinach and radicchio and it looks, it looks so good, you guys, right? I'm gonna add just a little bit more because my family loves the salad. And I promise you, you will too. I'm going to add a, another handful of greens, okay? So just get you a big bowl, put your handful of greens on there. And I'm going to slide this out of the way because this is for my tartar sauce. So I want to get that out of the way here. Let me just slide it on over carefully. Let me grab the other cutting board. I cut some red onion on it over there. Okay. So I'm going to slice up, I have half, whoops, I have half a red onion right here, and I'm going to just slice it really thin and add it to the salad. I almost dropped that right in the floor. I don't like a lot of onion, I don't, I'm not a big huge fan of raw onion, but red onion's not that strong, and it really does make all the difference in the salad. So the bacon that I have cooking, that is for the salad. And if you really don't want to add the bacon, or if you want to use turkey bacon, or you want to skip it all together, you can still skip it and it'll be perfectly delicious. So I'm not even using that entire half an onion. I'm using half of a half, okay? I'm just gonna use half of a half of an onion. And now I'm gonna add in this entire thing of feta cheese. You guys, this salad is so easy and it's so good. This entire thing of crumbled feta. If you like blue cheese instead of feta, you could totally do blue cheese. But I am extremely anti blue cheese. I can't even smell blue cheese. It, it, I cannot. I don't know how people eat it. I just think it's just too strong. I, I cannot. Or gorgonzola. I can't. I can't do any of those. But feta is a nice mild cheese, and it mixes really nicely with the pear. So if you if you're planning on making the salad, what I would say is make sure that you get your uh, pears a few days before you're going to make it. If I even have any left, my kids like to eat the fruit I want to use. Okay, goodness gracious, they're still here. 
So grab a couple pears and see this one's turning nice and ripe so it's going to be really sweet in the salad and that's exactly what I want. All right, I just wanted to stop and wash those pears really quickly. So I'm just going to, and even if they're just, they, you think that they're a little overripe, they're fine, I promise you. If they're soft, that's okay. And I'm going to take them and I'm just going to slice thin slices of pear and I'm going to put it on top of the salad. Now, I'm making the salad ahead of time and it's going to be just fine. I'm going to squeeze some fresh lemon on there. And what the lemon is going to do is it's going to keep the pears from turning brown. Let's say you hate pear. Nope, not going to make it because I don't like pears. You can totally use apples. Sometimes I'll switch it up if I don't have pears and I'll just use apples. And I'm telling you, it doesn't seem to matter what I put in it, what fruit, my family freaking loves the salad. Ava, when she sees pears in the fruit bowl, she's like, oh my God, you're making my salad. She calls it her salad. So I use two pears. I think that's plenty. I'm just gonna, that one's a little too ripe on the bottom here. I'm gonna cut the end off of this one. Just get rid of that. And this one. If it's bruised or something, just get rid of that. Just slice it off. That bacon's killing me. It smells amazing. So I'm just gonna chop them up. I don't know why every time I, I cook, my nose runs. I'm not sure, maybe because I've heard that when you're concentrating really hard that your nose will run. I don't know if that's true. Anybody know? Um, I was gonna go by and do this, but I feel like there's just too many steps. There's just too many, too many steps to do with everything that's going on here. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this. Put it right there, get in the trash bowl. And the bacon's in there. So when the bacon's done, I'm gonna crumble it up over that. So right now, let me get this lemon. I'm gonna chop this lemon in half, and I'm just gonna squeeze it. There's no seeds in this one. And I'm gonna squeeze it on top of the salad. Make sure you hit those pears, because that's really gonna help keep those pears from turning. Robbie's working, so I want it to be done for when he comes home in a little while. Um, he has been so amazing, you guys. He is more fit now than I think he's ever been. Even with all the soccer he plays, he's running every day. And I just, I don't want to sabotage him with the food. You know, I'm trying really hard. I love really like decadent and savory foods with a lot of high fat. And I really need to knock it off. So I'm trying. I'm really trying. So, all right, so now we've got that in there. Now there's these great little salad topper things at Kroger. I don't know if y'all have a Kroger or Fry's or Albert's or no, Albertson's or whatever. We have Fry's out here, which is Kroger. So they have these little uh, dried cranberries and honey roasted pecans mixed together. It's a salad topper and you can get the Kroger brand. It's a heck of a lot cheaper and it's the same. I promise you it's the same. So get one of those bags. You can even add extra pecans. Like I have a bag of pecans. I might add a little extra. But just sprinkle that on the top. Okay? Easiest salad in the universe. So, so far this is what it looks like. Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? And then when our bacon gets done, we're going to crumble. I'm going to chop the bacon and crumble that on the top. But what we need to do now is make our dressing, right? So the dressing... Here's my bowl. I'm gonna make it in the, no, I'm gonna make it, in the, that's for the tartar sauce. Okay, I'm gonna make the dressing. I think I'm gonna switch. Let's make the dressing in here. So for the dressing, I'm gonna take a one third cup of orange juice. I just figure this bowl is bigger. I might as well work, work in a bigger bowl. Okay, let me get mine. We need um, a quarter cup of olive oil. Okay, so a third cup of orange juice, a quarter cup, of olive oil. You guys, this dressing is delicious. A quarter cup of olive oil. We're gonna do a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. One tablespoon. I put always just a skinch extra on the top there. That's all right. We are gonna do one tablespoon of honey. A tablespoon of honey. Just like the Dijon, I kind of overfill it because some of it gets stuck in the spoon, right? And then we're going to do a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. I'm at the bottom of my apple cider here. 
And you're going to add some salt and pepper to taste. I'm just going to do a little bit of salt and pepper. Let me grab my salt. Ooh, that air fryer puts off the heat. And I'm going to do a little, maybe like a teaspoon of salt. Good enough. And then I'm going to get my whisk. You guys, that's it. That's your dressing. That's it. Quarter cup of olive oil, a third cup of orange juice, a tablespoon of Dijon, a tablespoon of honey, and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, salt, and pepper. Now, I know this doesn't look like a lot of dressing. I promise you that's plenty for that salad, unless you really like to drown your salad. Then you can go ahead and make a double batch of the dressing. Or if you wanna just make a double batch and keep part of it in the fridge, it'll probably keep for like a week, week and a half, and you can use it throughout the week. Okay, so now my bacon is done from the air fryer. Look at that, it's nice and crispy, you guys. It smells amazing. I may have left a piece in the air fryer just for me to sample, I'm not gonna lie. Now I'm gonna let just, I need it to have a minute, just so that I can let it cool before I chop it and put it in my salad, okay? So I'm gonna set that bacon aside for a second, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make our tartar sauce. So you already know about your salad. We're just about done. All the salad needs at the moment is the bacon, and then we're gonna cover it with saran wrap, sprinkle it with, you know, uh, a little bit of salt and pepper before you serve it, cover it with saran wrap, put it in the fridge until you're ready. You already know how to make your dressing. So now we're gonna make our tartar sauce for our cod. Easy, easy, easy. I always keep dill in my house, but I don't use dill that often. I'll use it if I make tuna fish for sandwiches, or if I make tartar sauce, or you know, uh, Greek tzatziki or something. So dill goes bad really quick if you don't use it. So what I'll do is I'll wash it, you know, and, and press it dry, and then wrap it in a paper towel, and I'll stick it in the freezer. And then whenever I need dill, I have fresh dill. So that's how I keep my dill, um, because I don't use it so often. So for the, for the tartar sauce, let me get a spatula. All right, we're gonna do one whole cup of mayonnaise, okay? Not Miracle Whip, don't be trying that nonsense, okay? You're gonna use real mayo, all right, you can use the low fat, I guess, if you want. Um, I know I'm trying to be somewhat good, but I am not eating fish without tartar sauce. That is not happening in this lifetime. And I'm gonna squeeze in a little bit of lemon, the juice of one whole lemon, okay? Right in to the bowl. I don't have a lemon juicer anymore because I broke it. My friend Grace brought one to my house and I broke the darn thing, I'm squeezing too hard. I guess I don't know my own strength. Okay, so the juice of one whole lemon, and then I get, these are for the fish, hold on. All right, so now over here, I have about six uh, slices of pickle, like the thin slices of pickle, and I cut them up, I chopped them, and I'm gonna put that right in the mayonnaise, and I have about a tablespoon and a half of dill. I hate wasting the dill because it's so good. All right. Oh, I got some on there. All right, and then just give this a good mix. Add a little bit of salt and pepper. Oh my God, I love freaking tartar sauce. Ooh, it makes fish taste so much better. Not healthy, but guess what? It's good. I'm trying, I'm doing a little bit at a time, you guys. Give me a break, okay? I have to have a little bacon and a little mayo. I'm good. All right, so just give that a good stir. Now, taste it. Okay, add you a little bit of salt, just to taste. Okay, I don't really have a measurement. Just sprinkle a little bit, sprinkle a little bit of pepper. All right, a little bit. Give it a mix. And then you're gonna taste it and see if you like it. If you wanna add more dill, add more dill. If you think it needs more lemon, add more lemon. Or more pickle, or whatever you think. And then once you do this, you're gonna put it in the fridge, cover it and put it in the fridge until your fish is done. Mm. I think it needs a little more lemon. Squeeze a little bit more in there. Let me get a different spoon. I'm going to lift off that spoon. Just a little bit more acidity you need. Because that mayonnaise is rich, you know? Okay, other than that, I think it tastes really good. Yes. So now, 
I'm gonna put it in the fridge to let it get cold, okay? How many of you do this? Your damn saran wrap comes out of the freaking cardboard box that comes in and you can't ever find the end of it. it drives me insane. Okay. Yeah, so I just find it easier to do it like that. I'm going to leave that out because I'm going to have to use it for my salad. Okay. Now cover your tartar sauce. Put it in the fridge for when you're ready. And then let's get rid of this stuff here so we have a clean workspace. Okay, let me wipe it down. I can't stand when I have a huge mess going on. I like lose it. All right, so all I'm gonna do is put these in the sink really quick and rinse off this cutting board. And we're gonna chop, let me dry it. And I'm gonna chop my bacon on there now so that I can put it in to the salad. Get my knife. Got my knife already clean. So just take your bacon, and you can just rough chop it. Doesn't have to be perfect. This maple bacon, oh my God. Combined with the, I gotta have a bite, you guys. Oh my goodness. Mm. Combined with the feta, forget about it. And that dressing, you can thank me later. Oh my God, delicious. I thought this would be nice. The salad's a little bit, richer, the fish is light. I thought that would be a nice combination. So hopefully you'll try it. If you don't like fish, then make chicken. Everybody likes chicken. I don't like to touch chicken though, raw chicken. Mm -mm. I do not like that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna, oh my God, that's the best part of the whole salad. And now we're gonna put this rest on here. This little guy feels like he needs to be cooked more. I'm gonna cook him more. Okay, let's chop it up my bacon. You guys, I don't know if you can see because this bowl is probably in the way of what I'm doing. But I'm just chopping up And there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna cover that with saran wrap and she's gonna go in the fridge until dinner. And that lemon is gonna keep the pears from turning. And this saran wrap being on it, keeping the air away from it, is also gonna help. So, just do that. I just wanna make sure that I cover it really good. I'm gonna cover it a little bit more on this side because there's a little opening, just like that. And I'm gonna pull it really tight to kinda help keep the air away from my pears. And there you go. Your salad's all ready. Go pop it in the fridge. You pop it in the fridge here. I don't have any room in my fridge. That's the problem. All right, there we go. I'm going to pop that in the fridge. Let me get this bacon out of the way. I might have saved it for myself. I don't know. It needs to be cooked a little more. Okay, let me get rid of this. Rinse that off. Okay, now we're going to do our fish, okay? Now, you could do this with whatever kind of fish you like. I like very, very mild fish. I don't even like fish. I don't know what I'm saying. If I have to eat fish, I want a really mild fish. And I do, I do like fish and chips, and that's usually made with cod. So I'm thinking, okay, we'll try some cod. So I bought some cod, and I made sure it was clean. I patted it dry. See, there's still a little bit of water in the bottom of the bowl there. So I want to make sure that... Um, you know, you try to pet it as dry as you can. And then I'm gonna use two pans. I have one here that has some flour in it. And then in this pan here, I'm gonna add my panko breadcrumbs, okay? This could be a disaster, I don't know, um, because I haven't made this before. I'm preheating my oven to, I preheat my oven to 400, and I hope that that's good. Okay, and this is nice because it zips back close if you don't use the whole thing. I would say start off with half of the bag, okay? And then put the rest on the side um, in case you need more. I always, I like a lot of coating, so I'm probably gonna need more, I'm guessing. And then to the um, panko, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of oregano. 
Now, this is not a recipe that I've seen. I'm doing it on my own. And about a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm gonna add some salt, about a teaspoon, and some pepper, maybe about a quarter teaspoon, and Parmesan. Now, I have real shredded Parmesan, but I think what I'm gonna do is add this grated Parmesan right here. And I think I'm going to add about a quarter of a cup of grated Parmesan. And I'm going to give it a good mix. Mix your breadcrumbs with all those spices and everything. If you have like dill, that would be good too. But I don't have dry dill. I guess I could add fresh, but maybe I'll garnish with that. So I just want to make sure that it, all that Parmesan is like crush down into the breadcrumbs and stir all the spices up. And now we're gonna do our egg. We need another bowl. Man, I'm going through bowls like crazy. All right, I have two eggs here. I'm gonna put the two eggs. There's my oven, she's ready. My kitchen's a disaster. I'm gonna put this other egg here. Let me get a fork to whisk this. Whisk your egg. And I have right here a lined cookie sheet, okay, with parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper and you want to use aluminum, make sure you spray it with non stick cooking spray, all right? Make sure you do that first. Now, it's like a little assembly line, okay? And what you want to do is you want to put it into the flour first. You're going to take your, let me put some gloves on because you know me. i got to have my gloves. Hold on. I hope this video isn't too hard to follow. Sometimes my videos are a little bit, I don't know, scattered like me. Okay, so I'm going to take the cod and I'm going to dredge it in the flour first. Do you know why I'm doing that? Because that flour coating is going to help the egg stick to it. Shake off your excess. I always end up with more flour on me than I do in the freaking whatever I'm coating. Now you're going to take it and you're going to put it in the egg. I should probably use like a, a flatter bowl. That would have been wise, but it's okay. Kind of let the excess of the egg kind of come off the fish. And then you're going to transfer it over to your pan that has your panko breadcrumbs. And I just sort of Pat it on there, flip it, make sure it's coated really nicely, okay? Just like that. And then you have this amazing breaded cod, okay? And you're just gonna repeat those steps until you get all of your fish covered in the breadcrumb mixture. So I'm gonna go finish and then I'll be back. All right, so now the fish is all breaded. It's on my parchment paper. It looks amazing. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to try it. I'm praying to the gods. Well, it turns out crispy and delicate, and I can't wait to try it. I'm going to put it in the oven. I'm not 100% sure how long I'm going to cook it. Um, I'm going to, it's at 400 and it needs to be nice and golden, right? So I'm gonna put it in there, probably I'm guessing about 20 minutes, because fish cooks pretty fast. But you also don't wanna undercook it. So I'm gonna put it in for 20, and then I'll check it and see if it needs a little more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. Oh my gosh, here's hoping, fingers crossed. So I'll be back when it's all done, and we'll put the nice dish together and see how it looks together. So you learned how to make tartar sauce, salad dressing, the salad, and the fish. So um, we'll be back in a little bit to show you what it looks like. All right, well the fish baked about 25 minutes. Come say hi, what does it look like? Hi. Robbie just walked in the door. I took a little bite to see, to make sure it wasn't like fishy tasting and it's not. It looks really pretty. I think, I, I went like back. Fishy. I like fishy I don't, tasting. I don't. I, I like put, fish. I went back and put a little She olive, never cooks fish for me. Ever. Never. I went and put a little olive oil over the top and put it back in the oven just so it would get brown on the top. So that's what it looks like, and I will... You want me to try it? You want to try it right now? But I was going to wait till I put it on the plate for you, and then I'll... Then we'll... No, I want to try it now. Aw, uh -huh. I don't want you to try it like that, though. 
I want you to try it like, you know, all right, here, let's put a little squeeze of lemon. He's not letting me do it the right way, you guys, so here. <laughs> Is it good? Okay, let me make you a plate, Gil. All right, so I'm just going to plate this up, and then, yes, right now I'm going to make you a plate. Um, I'm going to go plate this up. I'll be sure to put a picture at the end. Thanks for watching, guys. Awafi, until next time.